main target. Yeah, that was good. That was, that was a goal, start of the winter. That's what we kind of set our sights on. That's what we wanted to try and achieve. Um, it looked like we could do it, it looked like we should do it. Um, and then the race went to plan. So we managed to get the, uh, the result that we were after from the start. No, not at all. Uh, we thought we could get the mixed record, but we, I think we thought the time gap would be well, much smaller and it might be quite a lot closer, so it's nice to yeah. have that cushion at the end. We knew the, knew the competition we were against were good. You know, they, they had yeah. previous recent good form, so we weren't underestimating anyone on the race. We didn't think it was wrapped up before we started. The, you know, some of the strategies that the other crews had surprised us and made us you know, reconsider and reconfirm that we were doing the right thing for our race. Um, but we never kind of expected it to go as well as it did, really. We kind of, yeah, we didn't know the, the strategies were going to be different no. until we got back from after lunch. Yeah, I think beforehand we just almost tried not to think about what we were about to do, so we had some pasta, made sure we were drinking lots, and it was only when we got back to the start, sort of half one-ish, that we found out that everyone else had gone. And that point we kind of thought, are we doing the right thing? Have we set off too late? We did some more calculations and thought, no, as long as we stick to what we have planned, Yeah, we, we'll we, did, we did a lot of kind of talking aloud on a run up to it to make sure we were very clear on what we were doing. So we kind of decided that whatever anyone else did, we'd work out our start strategy, we'd stick to that start strategy, if they started five minutes before us, two minutes before us, an hour before us, it wouldn't make any difference to us. We were going to start at the time we wanted and try to not let it affect us. And yeah. that, that took a little bit of extra convincing that we were doing the right thing after we, when we were getting close to the start of the race. Pretty much dead on plan, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think the advantage of starting last was also that we knew the times that the crews ahead of us were going through the checkpoints. So we pretty much always had a marker that we had to aim against and we had to work against. But um, we did we sort of stuck to our own race plan and yeah, I, I think it yeah. just went to plan really. We were strict on our, our pace targets. We knew what time we wanted to hit each kilometre pace on. So we were quite strict mm -hmm. on those. We set a target from checkpoint to checkpoint. We knew what the conditions were going to be like because we've been stalking the weather <laughs> reports for the yeah. last week beforehand. So we had a good idea of what we should be able to do. After 10 hours, it went better than I expected. I knew from some long distance stuff I'd done before, up to 10 hours would be pretty good. We thought we could attack the race for a good 10 hours. And then that bit beyond was a little bit unknown. Um, so for me, kind of hours 10 to 14, we just kept the pace going, yeah, didn't, didn't slow pace. down. It was, we kept enjoying the race, you know, for the hours of the early hours of the morning when I thought it was going to get really tough. We're still enjoying it, still, I wouldn't say smiling, but the, the grimacing wasn't so bad at that point. I think probably the worst bit was just the tide rate at the end. Um, everything's so focused on getting to Teddington, like you do all your timings in Teddington, you've got to hit the tide at Teddington, you get to Teddington through the portage, and then it's sort of, right, you've still got two hours of paddling left to go, and still a really long way, and that did drag an yeah, awful the lot. Yeah, the first hour of the tide wave yeah. was, it was hard work. We kind of had a nice buffer then, so we, we knew we just had to get to the bridge, we had to get to the finish. Mm. Didn't but, make it come off any quicker though. But it was yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. I think we'd be a little bit more drilled with uh, working with the whole team a little bit, a bit mm -hmm. more. Uh, as far as our speed through the portages, our speed through the different checkpoints, that was great. You know, the, the whole idea of never stopping, never slowing yeah. down, that really went to plan. We, we were kind of flying through the, the portages and the checkpoints and the crews were always there. Um, it would just be making sure that everyone's much more clear on what we wanted at different points yeah. so that, that we didn't have to really pass on as many instructions during the race. Everybody would be really aware of what we wanted at the different times before we got to them. Yeah, I think we know now pretty much exactly what works food and drink wise. So, I mean, we're pretty much stuck to potatoes and hot cross buns the whole way. So, I think we'd be able to tell our support group exactly what we wanted and when. Yeah. Always 
always room for improvement, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We always, we can, I think we can always find a few more minutes. I think the, the biggest thing, that we, if we wanted to knock a chunk of time off what we did, would be have more of a pressure of the race on us. As I said before, it was a nice surprise for us. We were taking yeah. chunks out of the competition during the whole, like every checkpoint. I think if we had someone hot on our heels the whole way, it would have stayed us focus a little bit more yeah. and trying to um, trying to keep a higher pace. It's easy to say afterwards that you know maybe we worked as hard as we could, but unless we had someone right by us, we don't know how deep we could have dug if we needed to. It can definitely be beaten, yeah. Um, I think just, I mean, so many people have said it, you just need a year with a lot of flow and a good crew. Um, so, yeah, it can definitely be beaten as to whether we'll try. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think there's time to be had off that record. Um, I think it will only be, I'm sure we'll look back on this in a few years, so I want to be proved wrong, but I, 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 I can think that, we're, I think that record will go in the next few years or so. Um, hopefully we'll see a few more strong crews attempt it. And the right, if they just have the, the Thames goes in their favour for that, that day, then uh, we could see a new time set for that. But it will need a strong crew and it will need at least semi-favourable conditions to do that. Yeah, that made a huge difference. It that had so many well wishers, so many people cheering us on. It, especially when you're sort of in the middle of the night, and feeling a bit. Oh, we've still got a long way to go, and you hear someone shouting your name. Yeah, that was incredible. Um, yeah, we had it from the start as well yeah. because because some of the crews that were planning on taking a little bit longer on the race, they were looking to get the afternoon tide. So within the first few miles of the race, we were going past crews who were shouting, you know, good yeah. luck, <laughs> go for the record, hope you do it. And uh, that, that was great, you know, it kind of uh, helped keep us focused on what we were doing. Uh, every time we saw a camera crew or someone like that, maybe it made us think about our technique <laughs> a little bit more. And uh, that helped, uh, helped keep the pace of the race going. But I said, in the middle of the night, we'd go past the crew and then we'd hear a shout just behind saying, come on guys, yeah. good luck. And uh, that, was, that was nice. There's people at Locks, sort of rural countryside, middle of the night, they've turned up and we don't always know who they are because it's dark and you're running through, but you hear your names individually being shouted. So it's a, yeah, a huge lift. Uh, the, the, the last few days have been pretty painful. Um, I guess that was expected. We knew it was going to be uh, quite a lot of wear and tear on the body. So we've just been trying to eat as much as we can. Um, it'll take a few more days of, of kind of the immediate recovery and then we'll get back in the boat as soon as possible. Um, yeah, I think short term it was basically collapse, worry about everything hurting later and then medium term get back battling as soon as possible, get everything working again. Assuming we can get this recovery right, then we're off to Amsterdam in about 10 days time for a, a race out there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's uh, focusing on the next round of selection events, the next round of selection uh, assessment races. And that will be for the European Championships in Slovenia. I think we'll continue what we've done in preparation for this race we just had. Uh, it's made us, as I said before, analyse an awful lot of the different aspects of the race, try to find uh, different angles to look at the race, different, different ways of approaching it. And so we need to make sure that what we've done in preparation for this one we just finished, we use that strategy in preparation for this race for all of our big races for the year because we knew that, we know that this race went really well because of the amount of planning and the amount of hard work and the amount of analysis that we did for this specific race. So we can't just take that for granted for our next one. We will plan for that next race in exactly the same way that we plan for this one. And I think, you know, this race went well because of the preparation that went into it. So I guess we can only hope and assume that if we plan properly again for future races, we'll see similar good results. I would have thought so, yeah. I'd Probably not next year, or maybe a K1 year next year, but yeah, there's definitely other things I'd like to do with DW, so I'd like to do the ladies K2 one day and give the K1 another shot. I don't think I'm going to be one of these people who does it 
20 times over the course of their lifetime. But yeah, I'll be back. I think, I think it's a great race. You can see why people get hooked. There's some people that have done a huge amount of races. Mm -hmm. Um, they've got lots of finishes under their belts. This is my first time. It's taken me a while to uh, open my account for the DW, but I should imagine I'll be back to give it another go at some stage. It's a, it's a huge event. It's a great event. So, yeah, I think I'll look forward to doing it. I enjoyed it this time, so uh, I'll say this now that <laughs> I quite like the idea of doing it again.